yes, here we are. Yes, another week. Wow, two weeks in a row, Chant. That's really, really good. Awesome. Well done, mate. <laughs> so, yeah, this episode 48 of the Chant cast. Welcome back. Um, I'm happy to be back and doing this. Yes, let's keep this consistency going. Got quite a bit going on lately, which is good. Um, a lot this week, actually. Two major things that I really want to talk about, uh, as you can probably see from the title of this video. And uh, just a couple other things. So hopefully you've all done well and uh, we're all good. Um, I've kind of forgotten to put up my usual spiel. Let me just read that to you because I like to say it. I am the king of this realm, <laughs> Uncle Chant. I hope you're all being great ones to you and yours. Uh, yeah, before we begin, let me just do this thing. Uh, I'm going to put this on screen. It's a new splash page <laughs> um, after this. Uh, subscribe or call out. Yes, all this kind of stuff. You know, consider joining the Chump Call by following, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. And I've got a new splash space for this year. It's finally got the artwork up there. Uh, in placid day, in peaceful night, our solace treasured, unmoved our light. For those who seek to disturb the right, pacify and soothe serenity's might. Yes, that is the oath of the Chunk Core. Let's just be chill as much as possible. That's what that basically means. <laughs> I love it. I put some time in to do this artwork, and I'm going to do some more and um, add it to the internets and what I do here. Just have a bit more fun with it and do more of what I do. Uh, excellent. Um, yes, uh, I am facing a great, a great threat, as we all are on the internet. Uh, the threat is known as the algorithm. Yes. The evil algorithm. Yes. To defeat this creature, I'm going to need your help. <laughs> um, each and every time, <clears throat> excuse me, each and every time you see my video, please leave a like and comment together. We can take the fight to this beast and defeat it once and for all. Yes. So that is the goal here. Join the junk core and defeat this beast. Excellent. Cool. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get into the show proper now. Uh, as I said, hope you've all been doing well. It's been a busy week. And um, as I said, I've done a bit this week and I want to talk about a couple of things. But just to, excuse me. Yeah, very professional. Um, just to remind you guys, now that I'm back here, I'm going to be looking for some more uh, viewer submitted questions for the ask chant portion of the show like we used to do uh, while I was doing this. Um, so I've, I've pulled one from the archive just to you know get this uh, back in the, the rigmarole again. So I, I do apologize for the, the long wait on this one. Um, Will the nest 012. <laughs> I do apologize. It, I've had a busy, busy few months. So I'm finally coming to answer your question. Uh, so now that we're going to do this at a weekly cadence, uh, please, if you want me to answer a question, uh, if you want a chance perspective from it, <clears throat> uh, just drop a comment below this video or on Twitter or something. Just you know, at me with the question and then hashtag ask chant. You know, I'll be looking through that for, uh, throughout the week to start collating uh, a lineup of questions. Um, so yeah, anyway, enough about that. Uh, let's just get right into it, shall we? Excellent. Ask Chant. All right, so Wilderness012, I'm finally beginning to your question. All right, so what is it? With some of the biggest franchises now in a state of WTF and uncertainty, like DC, Marvel, Star Wars, Transformers, hmm, um, what do you think most likely is going to happen? Thanks, Chant. Welcome back. You're a real one and should be a bigger channel. Oh, bless. The world needs more Chant. <clears throat> well, some would debate that, but I really appreciate your words. Um, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's a that's a beefy question, and that could be a whole freaking Chant cast on its own. But I'll try and um, I'll try and just hang it down and um, see if we can get you an answer here from what I think. What do I think is likely going to happen? All right, so this was submitted before Transformers Rise of the Beast uh, came out. Uh, obviously, it's not here in Australia June 22nd, but I did see it. <laughs> I've already seen it, as you saw in my last video. Uh, DC, Marvel, Star Wars. Okay, so DC, we already know, is getting a full reboot, right? And I've seen The Flash now, and that's part of this video. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on that after a couple topics here. Um and Marvel. Okay, let me start with Marvel. And probably some of you are eye rolling of like, oh, of course he's going to start with Marvel. Oh my God. So <laughs> what do I think Marvel's going to do? All right, so phase four, just throw it out the window. 
right? I don't care if you like it. I don't care if there's redeeming qualities that you feel that I should acknowledge in it. I don't care. Phase four of Marvel has been just garbage. I, I don't like anything to do with it. It's it's all like I'm all for equal representation. Do not get me wrong here, but what I disagree with strongly is that what Marvel and Disney does now for the last I don't know five six years or longer, they minimize the value and the strength of being a man, right? All of these movies that are coming out now are all about girl power, minimizing men, making all the men in the movies the bad guy, all the the weak, submissive ones, and all the girls are like Mary Sue. They can do everything. They don't need no man, all that kind of stuff. That's fine, mate. Like totally strong women, go for it. You know, it's all, I'm not I'm not negating that at all. But come on, even most of the action heroes that have been out there, yeah, they they turn up, they blow things up, and they. They save the girl, whatever, and they go home. You know, back when I was growing up anyway. Uh, even in modern day hero movies, you know, it's the bloke kicking ass and all that kind of stuff. But they actually have struggles. They actually have a character arc. You actually see their hero's journey, right? And a lot of these Disney Marvel properties that are coming out now in film and TV, there is no character arc, right? There is no hero's journey for these women characters, right? And it's just boring, man. It's just, it's just beats you over the head with some agenda and... I don't like it, right? I'm not a fan of it. It's boring, right? I'm not saying that, you know, female-led movies are boring. That's not it at all. I like a good movie, right? I like a good story. Give me a good story and all that shit's not going to matter. But you can see, like, you can see all the news articles that are out there reporting on this fact of, you know, record low numbers and um, low returns from all this Marvel Phase 4, like, woke crap that they're doing. You know, they need to pivot and they need to pivot quick. And uh, I hope they do that. Phase five really, really has some work to do to come up from whatever phase four thought it was doing. Phase four is a nice experiment, but it's not sustainable. No one gives a shit, right? And that's the same with all the other Disney stuff that they're doing. No one gives a shit, right? That you're, you're pandering to an audience that's not there and they're not showing up for it, right? And they're not giving you money for it, unfortunately. But anyway, DC, um, DC has unfortunately been their own worst enemy for years and uh i hope james gunn when he comes in he yeah writes the ship so to speak um yeah i'm going to be disappointed mate like i after seeing the flash um it gave me feels mate and i'll talk about that in the flash review later on the show but i don't know what i want from dc anymore but i really loved what Zack snyder was building and I would have loved to really have seen what we would have gotten without all the studio meddling and stuff, right? Um, you can watch other videos of mine or that are out there to understand what I'm talking about here. I'm not going to give you a big lecture on the history of the Zack Snyderverse and all that kind of stuff and, and how I feel about it. Um, James Gunn's new DC, you know, you, you're going to have to win me over. Like Henry Cavill is peak. I don't know how you get better than Henry Cavill Superman, mate. He was he looks the part, he sounds the part, he reps the part, he is Superman. I don't know how you're gonna top who I don't know who you can cast to top Henry Cavill. He's a god. <laughs> He's a god tier man. Like you just look at him and you're like, holy shit, where the fuck did they chisel you out of, mate? Um anyway, fanboying aside. Um yeah, we'll see. Um even DC's fallen off. Like I oh, most of DC stuff post Zack Snyder's Justice League or around that time just was really kind of subpar. Um, I hated 2017's Justice League, um, but I loved 2020 or 2021's Zack Snyder's Justice League. I love that movie. Uh, Batman vs Superman, I love. Man of Steel, I love. It's a masterpiece. Um, David Ayer's Suicide Squad, I enjoy that. It could have been better, but I enjoy that. It was in the same vein. Wonder Woman was great. Aquaman was a lot of fun, but Aquaman and onwards is kind of where you can see the change of the tide, pardon the pun. And uh, it, I just kind of fell off. Shazam was a lot of fun, uh, but Shazam Fury of the Gods that came out, that was a lot of fun too, but it just a bit forgettable. Um, Birds of Prey, like Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey, that was a terrible film. <laughs> don't even get me started on that one. Uh, Wonder Woman 90, 1984, I don't know what the hell they were smoking when they thought that was good. That's an absolute trash film. Um yeah, and I'm not really forgetting it much. I mean, Blue Beetle, that's coming out um, in August. I'm really looking forward to that. I love Blue Beetle. It's one of my favorite DC characters, and it's about time he got some um, sh got some time to shine. 
Um, so yeah, you know, I just, I don't even read DC comics anymore. Like the, the stories don't really interest me. They're catering to a crowd again that just aren't there. Um, James Gunn was on Michael Rosenbaum's podcast, um, this week. Uh, there's a video that was posted about, and he made a comment about how people just aren't reading comics anymore. And, um, that's not entirely true. I mean, people are, but people are a lot more selective now. And, uh, the big two like Marvel and DC have alienated their longtime fans by trying to cater to, uh, fan base that aren't even there. They're not turning up. You've got all these people that are crying foul on social media, you know, these minority groups you know, wanting representation and stuff like that. But when they put out comics to cater to them, they don't show up and buy it. They just don't. Like the, the, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what you can do there. And you know, you need to bring your fan base back. Like I'm one of them. I've been a long time, long life DC fan and, you know, I don't read DC Comics anymore. Now I'm just reading Transformers, IDW, and uh, Boom Studios, Power Rangers, right? And I'm I'm investing in their um, hardcover volumes. Like I I really enjoy those books, you know. And Power Rangers is all about representation, but they don't beat you over the head with it. There's so many characters there that fit the mold instead of revamping pre-existing characters to cater to a minority group that don't give a shit, right? So there's books out there, like Image Comics is doing some good stuff. Uh, you know, there's independent comics that are out there that are nailing it. Um, manga, you know, Japanese manga is selling hand over fist um, in comparison to the Western comics industry. So, and they're just writing stories that they know their fans want to see. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's common sense. So I don't know. Um, DC and Marvel have a lot to do to kind of win those like me back into the fold, right? Star Wars, so. Uh, I mean, if they can find a way to reboot the the, the sequel trilogy, the the Ray era, um, the Force Awakens, I I really like that movie. That was really good. But after that, just dumpster fire after dumpster fire. Mandalorian season one and two was great. I haven't seen season three. Uh, Boba Fett was trash. Um, I, I'm looking forward to Ahsoka, but we'll see. Um, I haven't seen Endor yet. I haven't really heard good things about it. Um, but you know, what's is there such a thing as too much Star Wars? Now they're like Order sixty six was a thing in the prequel trilogy, but now it seems like all these Jedi that were supposed to be killed off are uh, somehow coming back. Like that was the whole point about Order sixty six. They killed every Jedi that was out there, and it was like Yoda and Obi Wan were the only real survivors, you know, in canon, so to speak. But now they just keep popping up out of nowhere. If you see the the, the Disney series, they keep saying, oh, here's another Jedi. Oh, here's another Jedi. They, they just keep finding the way back. <laughs> so anyway, uh, ranching along, I, I don't know what Star Wars is going to do. They need to just walk away from the Skywalker stuff and start again. Build a new trilogy some other place in the galaxy. We're done. You ruined it. Like, you ruined it. That, that, that sequel trilogy, you ruined it. You missed the fucking ball on that one. <laughs> You had so many ripe opportunities to do some epic stuff with those that are still with us at the time and now they're not here and your, your, your chance is gone. So anyway, I don't know what uh, Star Wars is going to do. Uh, okay, so Transformers, the last one. Transformers is in a state of flux right now. So the, the comics themselves, um, IDW lost the license and now they're going over to uh, Image Comics and they're relaunching uh, their new series this year. Um, it's pretty much an entire reboot. It's got no connection to the IDW series that wrapped it up, wrapped itself up um, late last year, I want to say, or earlier this year. I'm still collecting the volumes to that. So I haven't read the whole story yet, uh, but so it's got no connection to that. The movies, uh, well, uh, Rise of the Beast, if you saw my non-spoiler review last week, um, it doesn't really know where it is. And the producer and the director can't really confirm where it is either in the timeline. So think of that what you will. Uh, go back and check my previous video if you want to find out more of my thoughts about that one. Um, I do hope this movie does well because yeah, they're planning out a trilogy for this one. Hopefully they've actually got some thought and plans into it. And if so, I'm down for it. Right, I'm down for it. I'm looking forward to see what they do. I'm all about um, my bots, my Transformers. Like I, You can see all the stuff behind me. Um, Transformers is great. I just love it and I hope the movies do well because if the movies do well, that means we'll get more shows, more cool toys. Excuse me. Um, and if there's one thing I can rely on, um, they, they can only go so woke with um, sentient robots, <laughs> right? So as long as there, is there, there's a cool story in there and there's sentient robots smashing each other and stuff and they're not kind of going into woke politics because why would sentient robot alien 
robots, transformer bot thingies that turn into other things. Why would they give a shit about identity politics? I don't know. So let's stay that out of it, please. Um, you'll be fine. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm not meaning to, I don't intend to offend anyone here. These are just my thoughts. Like my thoughts don't represent any other whatever that I'm in, involved with. It's just my honest thoughts on that and uh, I'm entitled to it. Um, anyway, without going down that minefield, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, I look forward to, if you're still around, <laughs> hearing uh, your thoughts about my thoughts. Anyway, that's how the conversation goes. Anyway, thanks for that uh, wilderness. Wilderness, the zero one two. Yes. Thank you for that question. That was a really good one. It's a bit of meat on that one. I dig it. So yeah, if you if you want um, me to answer a question like this, uh, feel free to comment below and I'll rec uh, keep a record of it. And um, or just you know at me on Twitter, hashtag Ask Chunt, and uh, and I'll find it. Uh, excellent. Cool. All right. Uh, next question. Oh, next thingy. Next topic. The Xbox Games Showcase that happened last week. Cool. All right. Let's go. Excellent. All right. So you can see here is a lineup. Yes. These are the games. Uh, upcoming titles from Xbox Game Studios and Bethesda. So I didn't list every game on here because there's a lot of third party stuff that they showed as well. But um, these are the main points that are worth really highlighting and talking about. So um, just to recap, Xbox Game Showcase, they showed 27 games, 21 of which will be available for Xbox Game Pass and or PC Game Pass, which is pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, so we'll go through the list here. Uh, I just want to talk first off. Um, well, those of you who who have you watched, have you watched this showcase yet? Hopefully I'm not spoiling everything with this list on here, but uh, it was a week ago, so it's your, it's your own fault you haven't spent two hours to watch this <laughs> during the week. Um, I actually tried to live stream this. I woke up at 3 a.m. just before 3 a.m. to live stream it, and my computer just completely shat itself. I don't know why, man. I do not know why. My computer's got more than enough power to live stream and watch the stream at the same time. I did it on my old computer, but I don't know why this one is just not handling it. It's just not, I don't know why. Um, so I'll figure that out. I was really freaking annoyed about that because <laughs> I woke up 3 a.m. purposely to try and like cover it. You know, I wanted to be part of the, the, the discussion, part of the event in my own little pocket here. And you know, I was really annoyed. I was pretty damn angry. I spent most of the time just trying to fix my computer to, to watch it again. But I, I caught up on the most of the reveals and watched it later on that day anyway. So uh, win some, lose some. Uh, anyway, so yeah, first off, the uh, this isn't in any order. It's just kind of my interest of order, right? So uh, there's a new Xbox Series S uh, black one terabyte console coming out and it's about time. Like I don't, I don't have any interest in getting an Xbox Series S. I've, uh, my wife and I, we've got a Series X each um, here in the house so we can play together. Um, on two different 65 inch TVs. Uh, yeah, it's kind of one of those dreams come true kind of scenarios. Um, but I think this is really cool. That Series S has done a lot for Xbox uh, in this downtime. Um, a lot of people are picking up the Series S because funnily, funnily enough, many people haven't upgraded to a 4K TV yet. Uh, there, there are still people out there that is not interested in getting a 4K TV. Fair enough too, right? Um, you know, if you don't have a 4K TV and you haven't experienced 4K and you're not aware of the differences, I mean, 1080p is more than fine, right? But Series S can uh, output to 1440p as well, uh, from what I understand. So it's a pretty damn good box. You know, if you were a PS5 uh, console main or a C uh, Switch main or PC main, whatever, and you wanted to just get a, a backup console, like a secondary console, or Series S would do just fine. And uh, it could be your little Game Pass machine, you know, and everything else. Um, it's a really good unit. Like if anything happened to my... Series X or, you know, if I wanted to put one in here for some reason, if I wanted to live stream some games one day, which will probably never happen, but you know, I'd probably just get a small little Series S and throw it back here and, and go for gold. Um, but yeah, I thought that was, that was good. I mean, uh, that's going to cater to the, the other the other people that um, haven't been able to find a Series X because they did call out the fact that they're making the Series X more readily available now for the first time in, in years. Uh, so that's great. Um, I highly recommend if you really had to pick, just save the save a little bit longer and get the Series X. Yeah, you get that extra oomph and power and extra boost, and you can play anything any game that comes out to the top of of its ability on Xbox consoles. Um, obviously, PC, you're gonna get the if your PC can run these games at the highest, then go for it. But if you're like me and you don't wanna, you don't PC game at all, uh, and console is your jam, 
if you can save up for a few extra months, you know, get the Series X. I, I'd highly recommend it. But this Series S, like if you're really you know, tight on budget and you don't want to wait too long, um, maybe this Series S black one would be a great buy. It's got a terabyte in it instead of 500 gigabytes. I don't know how people are surviving with a 500 gigabyte white Series S. Ugh, I don't know how I don't know how you're managing that. Um, but good on you if you are. It's a great little piece of unit. Uh, anyway, so moving on. Uh, Forza Motorsport, October 2023. I, for one, am very much looking forward to this next Forza game. Uh, I do bounce between both uh, Forza games, uh, Forza Motorsport and Forza Horizon. Um, Forza Horizon 5 was a shit ton of fun. Played the hell out of that with my wife because uh, she's from Mexico. So we made a thing about it. Uh, we both played this together and um, that was a lot of fun. She doesn't really like racing games, but but she really enjoyed that one because it was just more arcadey fun. Uh, and I've been playing... I've enjoyed the Horizon series. I never played it until Forza Horizon 3 because it was set in, in Australia. I'm like, yeah, I'll give this one a go. And I loved it. It was a lot of fun. So ever since then, I've been a fan. I've been playing Forza Motorsport since Motorsport 3. Um, so, yeah, a bit, bit of a fan. Uh, this is a, a, a re revamp or a relaunch of this franchise. So I'm very keen to see what they do with it. Um, it seems like they're doing a lot of consumer-friendly choices, I'll say, <laughs> in this game instead of uh, micro-transactioning the hell out of it like um, and grinding and stuff like that like Forza 7 was. So that's good. They, I think they listened to the feedback. And um, very much looking forward to that. I will say though, like, it looks crispy as hell. Like it's a very, very pretty looking game. But I did see some like, I mean, it's it's native 4K 60 FPS, which is amazing. That's cool. That's locked, they say. But just little things like I still saw some um, like aliasing in fences in the distance, and some of the 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 smoke from the tires just looked a bit like you know Xbox 360 ish. <laughs> uh, that's probably a bit rough, but I was like. Mm. Okay, I was expecting a bit. I don't know what I was expecting, to be honest. I just thought, wow, wow, this is really pretty. But I expected a bit more like real world, a real world feel from it. Like it still looks like a video game, but a, a damn very pretty one. But I expected to see, I don't know, some real world lighting, um, a bit more like texture on the road. I don't know if it's because they're moving so fast. I mean, maybe I should check out some stills, but on the video, the, the I watched the 4K uh, version of it and yeah, I was like, damn, this is pretty, but I, I just didn't see a lot of detail and um, it just concerns me a little bit. I'm like, this is, this is meant to be a, a flagship um, game series for Xbox and uh, showcase of the system's capabilities and little stuff like that, like aliasing here and there and the, the tire smoke. Uh, off you know off the rubber and it just looked a bit janky and like yeah you're not going to really noticing that stuff too much while you're playing but when you're doing a showcase uh, people are going to overanalyze this stuff like me <laughs> and uh, you don't want to give them too much to go on and I don't know is it just me maybe it is anyway um, very much looking forward to it let me know if you are I'm sure at some point uh, in the the campaign mode uh, all the uh, opponents I'll say or everyone else on the grid. Uh, they're all driver tars. So if you're playing Forza Motorsport series uh, and you know I start playing the campaign for Forza Motorsport, um, I'll see you guys on the track, <laughs> which is cool. Like they're actual using driver tar data for who you're going to be racing against during the campaign mode. So that's a lot of fun. I think that's really cool. Um, anyway, looking forward to that. Uh, one day I hope to get my my driving sim set up one day, like a big nice screen and Xbox and a, and a seat and a racing chair and steering wheel with force feedback and pedals with force feedback and stuff like that. One day, one day when I'm not living in a two bedroom apartment, <laughs> um, wild nest, uh, maybe, you know, one day when my channel gets big and I can afford to live in a big house. Yeah, maybe, uh, appreciate, <laughs> appreciate your comment, mate. Um, yeah, and then next, uh, these these aren't in order, by the way. This is my my preference ish, and a couple at the end that I want to discuss. Uh, Senua Saga Hellblade Two. Uh, I saw a lot of negativity against uh, the showing on that. Like, yeah, like it was very um, uh, cerebral, uh, cerebral. That's the word I'm looking for. It was a very cerebral kind of showing. Um, I think people were expecting something else, but yeah, it's it, the game. It's not. It's not an action game. It's not a, it's not a God of War or anything. It's a, it's a game about like mental illness at the end of it, and like hearing things, the voices in your head, and visual trickery in your mind, seeing things that just aren't actually there. And 
all and and it's about you know Senua's journey and story and all that kind of stuff. Like that's what the game is, and I don't know what you're expecting out of another trailer. Like they already showed you an action trailer with one of the first uh, few reveals on the gameplay uh, before this showcase where they're fighting that giant troll. So yeah, anyway, uh, but I thought it looked stunning. Like the game looks amazing. It looks so impressive. Like I can't wait to play it. I'm going to make sure I've got my headphones on and just block out what I can and just get in, totally invested in it. I'm really looking forward to that experience. Bring it on. Uh, 2024, that game's coming out. Uh, Forza is out October 2023. So that's kind of got my October locked away. I'm very much looking forward to that. 2024 for Hellblade 2. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, this, this exploded. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2023 blew up during COVID lockdowns and stuff. Uh, all over the world, people are like, oh, this game is exactly what I needed right now. Like, we can't travel, but this game is kind of sort of fulfilling that need. And you saw stories of people, like, pretending that they're going on a trip, you know, and they dressed up and, like, you know, did their room up. So it looks like they were on a plane, all that kind of stuff. I mean, the people got quite creative during COVID lockdowns. <laughs> uh, so that was a lot of fun. And um, I did play quite a lot of uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2023. And this one looks to be, um, oh, my God, that's my work alarm. Uh, this one looks to be um, even better, right? It, this, it's actually giving us stuff to do, like tasks, like jobs. You know, I know it sounds boring, but like Flight Simulator 23, you could just fly around, um, you know, practice landings. You know, you could do races, so so to speak, and all that kind of stuff. But this one looks like it's actually giving you missions and tasks and uh, actually performing uh, the roles of people in these planes, like rescuing people, you know, uh, delivering cargo, and all that kind of stuff. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I know it sounds maybe to some listening to this it might sound boring, but <laughs> I know I understand. But I'm really looking forward to this game. You know, and it looks super pretty. And I know they'll probably squeeze out a little bit more uh, graphical fidelity, uh, fidelity, and um, and goodness out of the Xbox Series S for, uh, Series X for this one. Uh, so bring it on. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. Hopefully I'll get another <laughs> memory card. I don't have a memory card or expandable storage for my Xbox yet, but maybe next year I'll, I'll look at getting some because these games are just, they're not getting any smaller. Um, Avowed. Okay, so this is kind of my first negative here. Mm. So the first cinematic trailer, it was like a concept trailer, cinematic trailer, announcing Avowed way back when. And it looked like, oh, wow, cool. You know, this is this is like the Skyrim successor-esque, like Elder Scrolls successor type deal. Uh, and then they showed Avowed, a gameplay trailer last weekend. Oh, boy. Um, I'm a bit, yeah, I was a bit disappointed. It looks a bit janky. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was like, wow, I kind of expected a bit more. Like this, they're touting this is like, oh, you know, this is being made by the RPG masters. And, and they are, like the... the it's being made by RPG people that know their stuff, right? But it just looks a bit dated. You know, I don't know how long this game has been in development for or if that, you know, if we're still going to expect some polish. I mean, it comes out next year, so maybe the next showing of this game will be a bit more graphically impressive. But from what I saw, I was like, oof, like some of these particle effects and some of the, the magic effects and you know, some of the character models just looked rough. You know, so uh, I'm looking forward to be proven wrong here. Uh, let me know if, if I'm alone in that. <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious if it's just me. But anyway, uh, following on to that trend, like that medieval game, kind of fantasy game, uh, Fable 2024 release again. And I'll start off with that trailer that you saw was all in engine. That's all gameplay, right? And people were like, even in interviews, speaking to Phil Spencer and um, Mr. Booty, um, you know, saying that the trailer was... Uh, cinematic and, th and they're like no 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 <laughs> you know what makes you think that was cinematic or what makes you think oh, that wasn't gameplay and, th and they're like no that was it that was all gameplay and it says at the start of the trailer in engine like all captured in engine in game uh, it looks so good oh my god uh, i hope the game itself is good but i mean the trailer itself just nailed it it nailed the kind of sense of what fable is the humor the british humor is totally intact and um how could it not with those who are involved? I mean, you've seen the trailer. I won't spoil it for you if you haven't, but go watch it. Uh, look, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that one. Uh, I know that's, that's have a drink every time I say that. 
in this video, but looks cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not the biggest Fable fan from the previous series, but this one looks like it, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, South of Midnight, 2020 something. I didn't really catch that one. I didn't. I watched the trailer. I was like, eh, okay, this is a another first party game from one of the studios that Microsoft acquired along the way and i don't know i'm not really interested in it i'm hoping to be proven wrong i just need to see more about it just that initial trailer i was like eh. tower born that kind of looks like fun it's a co-op uh like hack and slash type beat em up thing i don't know much more about it but from what they showed on the trailer it, it looks kind of cool um clockwork revolution that looks really damn interesting i kind of dig that steampunk era of um you know aesthetics i dig that and that's really leaning right into it. And it's got some time travel, timey-wimey stuff in there. So sign me up. In Exile, doing it again. Looks cool. Uh, sea of Thieves, uh, Monkey Island. Okay, so here we go. Let me get back on my soapbox here for a second. Every time Sea of Thieves makes an announcement, I can't help but just hope to hell they announce a PvE way to play the game. Right? <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. I know it's not just me. Even my wife, like even when we played this game a couple of times, she pieced out on the game because she just, she hated getting griefed by other players in the world, right? I love Sea of Thieves. Uh, sea of Thieves. I sound like a cockney. Sea of Thieves. Um, I love Sea of Thieves. I really do. Conceptually, it's cool. It's a very damn pretty game. I love the art style. Uh, I love the whole concept of it. It's a lot of fun. I played a good amount of that game. I stopped playing it because I just could not put up with being griefed. Right, you spend a couple of hours doing a run of treasure hunting and stuff like that. And then on the way back to handle in, it just, you, you get boarded and you get your ass kicked somehow. Um, so damn quick you don't even have time to really respond to anything and then you just you lose your two hours of progression and that's just painful no thank you that's not fun to me right and uh, they keep saying like no that that's not the vision of the game we're not going to do that we're not going to do that but yeah you've got a lot of players but imagine how many players you would have if you just set up a pve server and just change some of the progression i guess uh, if you need to uh <laughs> i would i would pick up Sea of Thieves then. There's a lot of uh, enemy types in the game already that could serve that that method right there. That you, there's all those skellies, you've got sharks, you've got krakens and all that kind of stuff that can cause you trouble. And that's part of the game world, right? It, it's not some asshole that just wants to come after you for no reason, you know? <laughs> um, I think they've got... I, 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 I think when the when that game starts trailing down... I think they might want to introduce some new players and they'll go, all right, let's 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 set up a PvE mode, right? And then you'll have this swathe of people that have been wanting to play it and uh, pick it up. Anyway, that's just my rant. Um, but this is about Monkey Island. <laughs> um, I was like, of course, that was great. Uh, that looks like a lot of fun. Again, if I played the game more, I'd probably be into this. I never played Monkey Island, but I appreciate what it is. I had a couple of mates back in the day in school that played it and loved that series. I've seen enough about the game to understand what it is. Um, so that's awesome. That's a no-brainer. Like the the parts of the Caribbean, I was like, wow, that's cool. And now Monkey Island, like, wow, that's cool. Like this, this little game that could. Like Sea of Thieves came out of nowhere and was a game that nobody was doing. And then here it is, and it's it's making swings like this. It's really cool to see. Right? And I'll say that even if it's if it's not a game that caters to me it's obviously catering to millions of other people out there and uh, it's great to see it succeed like this um you know good on you that's awesome hopefully you guys are interested in that play it um now here we go to starfield right september 2023 i think everybody's got locked <laughs> as soon as this uh direct uh starfield direct video played at the end of the xbox showcase i think it just it just swaved over and that's another word swaved i've used that twice uh, during this video already but it just swayed across the the internet and everybody's like wow holy crap i need an xbox now you know oh i hope my pc can play it you know and um everybody's going well i guess there goes my life <laughs> or at least there goes my september onwards uh, i know what i'm playing during the holidays kind of thing uh, which is great to see like bethesda are good at doing that um, they always seem to deliver those kind of games that have that 
um, word of mouth carried. And it's all in the presentation, right? That that presentation for Starfield was spot on. I, I was like, wow, this is still going. And it's like, oh, we've got this other game mode. And we've got this other game mode. Oh, and guess what? We have this other game mode. Oh, and you can also do this. And you can also do this. And just when you think it's about to finish, oh, and we have this whole part of the game. And you're like, wow, what, how much have you put into this game? Like, it looks incredible. Like, some of the character models, like the faces look a bit, you know, shite. <laughs> but let's be real here. It's, it looks a lot better than any other Bethesda game that they've done. Um, outside of that, the game looks impeccable besides the character faces. Otherwise, it looks legit. It looks pretty. It looks like a stunning game. I'm, I'm really keen on this. Uh, I'm going to try and figure out I've got a spreadsheet going of all the game releases that I'm looking forward to. They're all dated and, you know, priced and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm into my spreadsheets. Um, nerd! Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to try and blot out a time somehow, like how to justify playing this game. I don't know how. Like, I don't know how I'm going to find the time. I'm barely finding the time to play anything else right now. Um, but between work and you know, other, you know, uh, being a husband. <laughs> um yeah, so that's great. Anyway, it's stuff like this that comes out. We go, okay, cool. I know I don't need to buy any other games when games like this come out. <laughs> I mean, considering all of the games that I've just read out here today, more or less, will be on Game Pass, right? So if you just have your subscription, you don't have to spend you know two thousand bucks on this list. You know, you, you just spend fifteen bucks a month, right? And you're good for the next year or whatever. You know, or whenever you want to play it, just jump in, right? So that's that's this is now showing the true value of Game Pass, right? When you've got Microsoft now coming out showing, hey, this is the shit that we've been working on. All you assholes out there that have been whinging, complaining that we don't have games, well, let us show you. Here they come. This is what we've been working on. Like this showcase just nailed it, man. Like PlayStation Showcase was shit house, and that's not coming from an Xbox a fanboy like I am. Like I'm unabashedly an Xbox fanboy. Right, but even I have been in recent years going, what the hell is going on? Like, I've invested so much in Xbox as a platform. Where are the games, man? Like, where are the big ones? Like, why do you keep making mistakes? Why are all these games that you're pumping out like broken and busted? Well, here we go. Like, it, this made me go, oh, okay, cool. Here comes some quality games. Like, a bit of a relief of like, well, okay, yeah, do I need to just. Uh, I wanna, I wanna find an excuse to put my switch down, or find an excuse to, you know, stop playing my backlog for a while, and um, or my, yeah, you know, I, I haven't even turned my PS5 on for for many months now. But anyway, besides the point, uh, this this is just proving that games Game Pass as a service for Xbox, and if they can keep this kind of cadence up, or this quality content uh, going in future, I mean, <laughs> we everybody knows Xbox Game Pass is the best deal in business, right? In entertainment. Everybody knows that. But now with this stuff coming out, it's, it's just now proving the fact that like, yes, let's prove that again. It is the best deal. Uh, it, it's incredible that you can play all these massive games for 15 bucks a month. Insanity. Absolute insanity. Anyway, um, that's just my recap on uh, the Xbox Game Showcase and what my thoughts were. Um, I've been wanting to do this. Uh, since it came out on uh, Monday morning, 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, so I'm a bit behind here, but you know, I don't care. I can only do what I can do. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Like, what, what stuck out to you on this showcase? Uh, there was a lot of other showcases during this Summer Games Fest. I'm not going to cover all of it. Xbox is my jam. I want to cover Xbox. And uh, you know, if I have time next time stuff like this comes around, I'll cover more. Um. But yeah, tell me what you think. I'm very interested. There's a lot there, a lot of games to digest there. There's got to be something there for everyone. Um, I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Anyway, excellent. Cool. Well, next topic is going to be The Flash. All right, we're going to talk about that and what my thoughts on that film were. So stick around. Mm. Okie dokie. Let's do this. Let's do it. Yes. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Yes, that did happen. That certainly did happen. All right, so The Flash. <sighs> All right, let me set the stage. Let's okay, take a little drink here. Let me take a drink. Oh, yes. Okay. This movie is not without issue, but I loved it. 
It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh boy, let me tell you. Okay, so I bought my tickets uh, a few days prior. Bought the first session on Sunday, uh, Saturday morning, 9.30 a.m. That was the session, yes. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. I went on a kind of media blackout for this movie. I didn't want to know. I, I knew enough to know. Well, I saw the, the couple of trailers and I was like, holy shit, this looks amazing. And it was. Um, there's a few things that didn't happen in the movie that I wish, I wish. I almost got everything I wanted in this movie. I almost got everything I wanted in this movie. And more in some instances. So let me just, I don't want to spoil too much. There's so much to spoil in this movie. It's one of those movies, it's its too difficult to really talk about um, the way I like to talk about these movies uh, or any movie or game in general uh, without spoiling too much. Um, but I'll say, I'll get Ezra Miller out of the way because that's a bit controversial out there because you know, he's done some bad stuff. That's putting it mildly. Um, he nails it. Uh, he 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 carries the film almost effortlessly. Uh, without him in the movie, I don't know if it'd be as entertaining as it was. Um, think what you want of the guy, the the real person behind Ezra Miller. Like think about him, what you will. Like yeah, fair game. Like if it's if it's legit, and those comments are cool. Like yeah, like he, he's just, if it's all true, what's going around there? Like he's a scumbag, all that kind of stuff. Um, but set that aside. Um, just to separate the art from the artist for a bit. Um, I honestly don't think, this isn't a spoiler, I honestly don't think he'll ever be back as Flash. Uh, doesn't matter how well this movie does, I don't think um, he'll be back. And we already know, and I know James Gunn's kind of danced around it, saying, oh, you know, if Ezra wants to come back, you know, blah, blah, blah. But no, I don't think he'll be back. Um, he's got he's got too much, too much red in his ledger, as uh, Marvel likes to say a lot. Uh, but in the universe, but anyway, uh, but yeah, without him, it, this wouldn't be as lively as it was. I think he he plays a a great version of Barry Allen. He this isn't the Barry Allen that I would imagine, and even in the Justice League film, uh, it wasn't the Barry Allen that I was thinking was going to happen. But it's the Ezra Mel Ezra Miller Barry Allen that we got, and it's highly enjoyable. There's no denying that at all. And uh, he makes it his own, and he looks like he had a lot of fun with it. Um, I laughed out loud a few times. Let me tell you, <laughs> that in the trailers, this isn't a spoiler, but in the trailers, he interacts with himself uh, like another younger version of himself. There's like time travel stuff in this movie, obviously, um, and there's some really funny stuff that they do in this movie that is just like, wow, that that is gold. That's so funny. And there's one moment that I, I won't spoil for you, but I laughed out loud in the cinema. And I don't do that a lot. Like I kind of like, <laughs> you know, to myself, but I, I piss myself. Like I, I even missed a couple of things that happened after it because I was still laughing about it. It just, it, the one thing that it just got me, whatever I'm, I'm referencing to right now, uh, it just got me. And um, I was like, yeah, all right, that's, that's great. Um, God, I wish that's, I'm trying to tell you about it in such a vague way. Um, if you see this movie and you've watched this video up till this point and you remember it at the time, come back and tell me what you think it was and I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, it just it just got me. Um, and there's a lot of situational stuff in this movie that was funny. Not, none of the jokes I felt um, were forced. They're all really situational and appropriate in their scenes, which is great. Um, Ezra Miller's Barry Allen is real, like this erratic... Uh, hyper individual who's always he can't rest like he's always just thinking about stuff and you know he plays that really really well like he's this manic kind of character neurotic even and uh it, there's it it just eats up the scene it's, it's really really cool I, I really highly enjoyed that um based on the the posters that have been coming out for this movie it's not a spoiler in the trailers we know michael keaton's batman is in it um that was you know that was really very cool i'll say that they didn't go full ham on it. They didn't they didn't lean on the nostalgia of that Batman. Michael Keaton's Batman. It was in the movie. It served the purpose. Um, how do I say this? But 
they didn't ham on it like I thought they would have. I thought they would have went, okay, you like nostalgia? Here's nostalgia. Here you have it. Yum, 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 yum. Like they didn't do that with Michael Keaton's Batman. They, it, they, they played the character as if um, it's kind of uncertain what if it was that universe or not or if it was just a version of. But, um, oh, man, how do I, <laughs> this is really difficult to dance around because there's so much stuff that I don't want to spoil for you. But... I enjoyed it. Let me tell you, Michael Keaton's Batman kicked ass. He did. He kicked ass. Uh, they really. There's a lot of fan service for that Batman in this movie, <laughs> and uh, deservedly so. I, I think he kind of, after the Batman Returns back in the day, uh, and I think all of us that enjoyed those uh, Tim Burton Batman films, yeah, we're about due for something, you know. And this movie is about that, man. Let me tell you, there's some stuff that happens in this movie that is about that. Those long-time fans like me, these old farts like me that have been watching these DC movies from way back when, since we were a little kid, you know, and that we're in our late 30s now and we're getting all these older actors coming back and reprising their roles and, and Marvel and DC are leaning heavily in this nostalgia bait stuff. Um, but there's some stuff in this movie that just hit me hard, man. <laughs> like... I saw stuff in this movie I thought I would never see, right? I, I know a lot about DC's history and DC's movie history, you know, stuff that could have happened, stuff that didn't happen. There's there's popular stories out there, without spoiling anything for you, there's popular stories out there on movies that almost got made that didn't, and you see it here. That's all I'm going to say, right? There's an entire sequence just about what I'm just talking about right now. All the way back, way back when to now. And it nailed me. Like, I, I started crying in the cinema, right? That never happens to me. The last movie to do that to me was Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And it was just after my family all left town and I was left on my own. And, you know, that movie was about family. And it, it came out at a time it just freaking nailed me and I've I had a sob to myself in the car but and then but this movie um I don't think everyone's going to appreciate that sequence unless you're like me right um and that's a, that's a plus and a negative uh but it's also it's shining a light on DC's history in film right and it just shows you how much they've done. Even before Marvel came out, like DC were doing superhero movies back in the 50s, man, uh, and doing serialized TV shows all through the 50s, 60s, onwards, like forever. And, and, and um, you know, without going spoilerish here, but it's, it's just such a great, amazing sequence. And if I don't know, and I'm not going to spoil anything, uh, I don't know if this is it. Uh, I don't know if this movie like James Gunn's DC is a reboot, right? But he's kind of muddied the waters saying that Ezra is keen to come back or cool to come back. Wonder Woman can come back if she wants to. Uh, Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot can come back if she wants. Um, Jason Momoa's Aquaman can still be around if he wants. Like he's kind of muddying the waters here. But when you see this Flash movie and how it wraps up, um, you're left wondering, like, what happens now with this? where are these characters at? Um, even this movie doesn't give you a final answer. And that's smart and confusing at the same time. Because <laughs> to me, I was going into this movie going, all right, I know that Aquaman has another movie coming out after this one. So how does this work? Right? How does this work? With all the stuff that happens in The Flash what does that mean for the Aquaman movie that's about to come out? What does that mean for the Blue Beetle movie that's coming out in uh, in, in August? Um, how does the Shazam Fury of the Gods movie fit into all this? Um, do they even care at this point because they know it's getting rebooted by James Gunn's new universe next year? Like, or in the coming years? Like, what does this mean? And I, I kind of wish that this movie came out after Aquaman... And maybe if they save Blue Beetle for James Gunn's new universe, right? And being very careful with what I say here. <laughs> um, let's just say, let's just look at it in a bottle. Let's just say this Flash movie is it, right? 
what a beautiful way to end it. What what an absolute beautiful way to end it, right? Even with it, it, it showcases everything. It even like makes you think about all the troubles that the Zack Snyder's universe that was started to be built, all the trials and tribulations of that up until this point of Flash. You know, what a kind of what a beautiful way just to round it up and go. You know what? There's been a lot of there's been a lot of trouble in DC's film history, a lot of successes and a lot of failures, and you see them all on display in the Flash. And um. What a button. What a nice button. Tie the bow on it if the Flash was it. Um, I love this movie. Like It's not perfect. Like There's some really questionable CG in this one, and I think a lot of it's got to do with this movie should have come out like last year or two, and there's a lot of reshoots um, that happened for this movie. But they benefited from it um, in spades. Uh, I cannot wait to get the 4K Blu-ray on this movie. Um, I don't think this is going to do gangbusters. Um, I hope it does because I want everybody to see this movie. It, there's a lot of heart in this movie. There's some sequences for Barry Allen that you just you feel for the guy <laughs> and you can understand some of the choices he makes in this movie, even the other Barrys, you know. Um, you can get it. Um, and it gives you a different look on the, the, the DC universe that has been since 2011, no, 2013, since Man of Steel. It, it gives you another look at it. And it's kind of a, a bookend. Like it, you've seen the trailers. There's some Man of Steel stuff in it from 2013. And now this movie in 2023. Like that's a long time, right? Like 10 years worth of stuff. And it's just a nice bookend. But if you go Man of Steel to Flash and you're just done, that's a really nice bookend to a series of films that had a lot of imperfections, a lot of problems, but a lot of epic stuff in it. Um, and this this stays true to that. Right, there's a lot of epic stuff in this movie, stuff that you've never seen before. Some of the sequences were just mind blowing. Um, I love it. I saw so much stuff in this movie I didn't think I was going to see. Uh, they nailed some stuff that I didn't think they were going to nail. Um, the Supergirl in this one, I really enjoyed. She was cool for the time that she had. Um, she's an amalgam of two different characters. Um, she's a, an amalgam of uh, an injustice um, version of Supergirl that's in Superman's dream. I won't even go into that. That sounds as nuts as it is. Um, and an amalgam of the Flashpoint Superman who's all like, you know, been trapped and caged for years and hasn't had sunlight and all that kind of stuff. So it's these two amalgamations of um, a Superman and a Supergirl in one character. Um, and I recognized that. And I was like, oh, damn, that's cool. And she did really well. Um, if she comes back in some instance, I don't know. But if I would be totally cool if they brought her into James Gunn's, uh, James, well, let's be careful what I say there, James Gunn's, um, <laughs> almost said something else his universe uh, that'd be cool the costume looks sweet i think she did a good job uh, with what she had very little time but she did a good job what she had um but yeah look at that's that's the flash um there, there's a lot to say about this movie that i can't say um the first the the, <laughs> the first hero sequence oh my god let me just go into that a little bit okay so the <laughs> the first opening sequence of flash doing flash stuff uh, and you see some people turn up and some cameos and you see some wild, wacky stuff happen. That was such a lot of fun. That's a movie in its own, man. Uh, I would have I would have loved to hang around that movie, right? But we got like two or three movies in one in this. And uh, I, yeah, they, they nailed it. Um, Andy Muschietti, you did an amazing job. Um, I read that you're getting um, tagged to do the, the Batman movie for this new James Gunn's universe. I would be totally on board with that. How you handled uh, the Batman in this movie was just spot on. Um, it's like you did this so effortless, effortlessly. I don't know how to make movies. I'm not going to pretend I do, but you know, it's easy to tell when a bad movie is a bad movie. But you've done something here that should be almost impossible like you worked with a studio that doesn't even know what it wants to do and you're making a movie in a transitional period <laughs> between an end of one universe and the start of another and um but i don't know how you figured this out that you did it awesomely man like you'll you'll never see this but well done to you mate that's so freaking good you did an amazing job uh again yes i cannot wait for this in 4k blu-ray i want to see it again um you know if i can get into the cinema again i will um, but yeah, I'll always remember seeing that sequence for the first time that just nailed me. 
it was so damn special. And I will thank whoever's idea that was to do that and how they executed it. Thank you for that. I never thought I would see it. You know, and there, there's a lot of stuff in that sequence that everyone that knows about that stuff thought would never see the light of day and uh, or would even be possible given the people involved in these scenes, right? And I'm being, as, I'm being very cryptic here. But they did it somehow. They gave us something very special and it's a tribute to film. It's a tribute to DC history. It's a tribute to Warner Brothers history. Um just knocked me out of the park. Uh, if anything, I want the Blu-ray just to have that on hand, right? That's it's a to me that was a piece of cinematic history. That um, everyone needs to see it. Everyone who's a superhero fan, even if you don't like DC, right? Even if you're if you love these superhero movies and you've read superhero comics or you have a favorite superhero or whatever, that this sequence alone will make you want to look into what all that means. Like you might come out of this movie going, "What was that?" You know, what's this about? Like, I need to know about that. Well, what happened here? What's that reference to? And you'll start going down this rabbit hole of, oh my God, look at all these stories. And uh, that's what it's all about. You know, this, this movie has made me walk away thinking about stuff, you know, appreciating stuff that we have. Uh, me as a kid, like it, it, it hit me on so many levels of me growing up with all this stuff. And there it is, all on display, hitting me in the face. Like, like oh man. Oh, just amazing. Anyway, I'll I'll stop gushing. Um, just go see it. Just go see it. And let me know what you think. Again, I'm saying this as I'm fully aware that you might not have the same impressions that I do. Uh, but just if you listen to this and then go see the movie, you might understand a bit what that means. Uh, even if you don't understand what you're seeing, you might go, oh, okay, this is what he was talking about. Like, oh, okay, wow, all right. And then you might look into it a bit more and go down some YouTube rabbit hole or whatever about those things. But anyway, anyway, <laughs> I, I could keep going. I wish I could spoil it all for you because there's so much to talk about that I really want to talk about. Um, but yeah, Flash, go see it, loved it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop there and uh, we'll, we'll wrap up the show. Excellent, excellent. Cool. Oh, well, we're just coming out on a cool hour here. Um, that's pretty good. It's a good cadence. I think we did a good job on um, getting through this show uh, this week. Last week was a bit rough because I'm a bit out of the rag uh, rigmarole, so to speak. Um, but, yeah, I've been back at work and I've been used to talking to people again. So <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well at the moment speaking um, for an hour on my own. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. I did. Oh, excuse me. A bit bubbly. Soft drink. Shouldn't drink soft drink. Oh my God, shouldn't drink soft drink before a show. Anyway, really enjoyed this one. Thank you very much for everyone that's stuck around to the end here. Thanks to anyone that watches these videos. I had like, I've been away forever and I still got some views on the last one. Uh, so thank you very much. And for those who left the comment after me being away for so long, thank you again. I appreciate any of you that are still here after all these breaks that I have. Um, Look, any time you take time out to watch my videos or listen to what I've got to say or you know, follow me on socials and that kind of stuff, I'm very much appreciative of your time. And um, I, I do, it's not lost to me that you choose to view this, right? And I, I know that. So hopefully you get some worth out of this. And I like to provide some kind of insight whenever I do one of these or my own perspective, right? I, I don't want to be one of those just talking heads that doesn't really say anything. I want to come into these with a bit of insight or at least um, you know, some knowledge or a different way of looking at things that you might go, oh, actually, that's a good one. Like I didn't see it that way or whatever. If you learn anything from what I say or anything like that, then it's worthwhile. Um, I had comments on the last video uh, saying uh, just online for people pinging me saying, oh, man, you know, that I didn't see things that way or I really appreciate how you described that and like that stuff alone is what I want to do uh, and I, I love that feedback uh, so thank you very much for that um, you know who you are and um, it's good to be back <laughs> anyway I'm rambling on now uh, thank you very much for your time uh, take care of yourself and each other and uh, we'll catch up on the next week's episode and if I jump on and do something else during the week then you'll see it excellent to lose enjoy yourself I was going to say something else there. Now we've got an awkward end. Well done, Christopher.